Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. I am your host, Willie, the habitual line stepper. And we are back for the third episode. And of course, I am joined by the league. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the first one. Uh, Resident Big Brother. How we doing, King? Uh, what what kind of vegetables did we eat today? Hey, I'm doing well. Glad to be back. Eating well. You know, just going through my my usual list of vegetables. But yeah, happy to be back with everybody. I'm 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 glad that you was able to find a Zoom uh, link to join us today. Since uh, I don't know, I, I didn't send it back last month but it, it's cool it's cool i mean it, it happens i mean we, we we king we're kings we're not perfect so it, it's yeah cool. and you know forgiveness is good so you know i forgive you for that but yeah we overlook that we move on um because we are brothers and kings you know we help each other so i just reminded you thank you glad to be back we, we forgive you for the <laughs> right too. We, we forgive you for the ages and try to put that on the over hill gang and you know yeah yeah okay though. it's okay J. Dot King, how you doing, my brother? You are looking exfoliated today. You are looking happy today. We might get in. We we might actually get into why you are so uh, smiley today. But how are you doing today, King? I I am doing very well. You know. Uh... We don't have to keep talking about me smiling. That's not that's not necessary. But uh, you know, I I'll be honest with you guys. I had listened to the intro and haven't uh, heard it just now. I feel important. Like I feel special. I feel like uh, I might be somebody. I feel like the beginning of a movie or something like that. So yeah, I'm I'm in an excellent mood. Thank you for asking, sir. Okay. Hey, but you are somebody though. That's the thing. Don't don't you you are somebody. You remember that poem? I am somebody. Somebody. I just needed to be reminded. That's all it was. Yeah. Hey, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't... Next, we got Joe, my favorite Mexican. Not because he's the only one that I know, but he's the only one that I understand. How you doing, King? I am doing yeah, I did. great. I, already into three minutes, I've already <laughs> habitually mind stepping. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, great brother over there. He's like, he's dying. Don't be choking on the gummy bears, brother. What are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, happy to happy to be back. Just came back from out of town, ready to roll. So, yeah, everything's good. All right. All right. All right. All right. What's up? What's up? I feel like I'm going to have to be... <laughs> the human resource person on this show. <laughs> hey, everyone. Big yes, brother, you, a.k.a. You human resource person. <laughs> Step into my office real quick. We need to discuss right. yeah. your behavior. Mute your mic, sir. Yeah, mute your mic. <laughs> give, give me, the, give me the, uh, the, head, the head signal. Like, They're like, where's Willie? Oh, he's a human resource, so we want to have Jay Dot lead this conversation for, me for this next segment. <laughs> hey, well... <laughs> I was on my best behavior last night with Fee when we recorded, so y'all might get a lot of habitual line stuff with today. Oh man, it's <laughs> great. Good to know. So, how uh, uh, mental health check, fellas? How 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 we feeling? How we doing? Go ahead, Joe. You say just got back from a nice little trip. Yeah, it took the uh, our daughter's uh, fourth birthday. We. Went up to the North Country where it's nice and cool, pines and forest and all kinds of stuff, and uh, feel relaxed, uh, de-stressed out there uh, while we were out there this weekend, and I feel good. Mental health is uh, pretty good to hopefully start out on Monday, so 
Uh, yeah. Like it. I like it. Gray Dot, how's your uh, mental health, brother? Uh, pretty good right now. Life is moving in some exciting new directions and things that I didn't expect. Uh, but that seems to be a, a pattern right now. I just go with what the universe presents me and good things tend to happen. So I'm rolling. Excuse me. Uh, resident brother. Uh, I'm good. You know, have some time to do some introspective work, have some, you know, conversations with myself, you know, build myself up. I'm encouraged. I'm ready. Feeling good. What about you, Will? I am in a good place right now. I was just telling Fee last night when we recorded, I'm in a really good place. Good. I That's really, good I really am. Uh, I put an application in where I did an application for a therapist like two months ago, and I still haven't heard anything. Back. <laughs> I haven't heard anything back. Don't give me the thumbs up. <laughs> It's, but you took the initial a, step. You took the initial yes, step, though. Yeah, I did. So, but I am in. I'm in a, a good place mentally. I really am. Um, I got up this morning, went for a walk. We having like fall like weather right now. So I got up, went for a walk, went for a little drive. You know, uh, went to the car wash. Um. Did a little bit of shopping. Let me ask y'all something real quick. Because I'm, I try to make sure Fee doesn't spend too much, you know, or buy stuff that she doesn't need or we don't need. I feel like sometimes it's really me. Like, I get the stuff that we need, but at the same time, it's like, ooh, this could, this could be good. Or, I, I buy in advance. You know what I mean? So we may have like a quarter of dishwashing liquid left. I'll go ahead and buy it just so that we have it. So when we run out, but it's like, did I really have to buy it right now? Mm. I could have waited. You know what I mean? Uh, I go to the health store to get me some more sea mouse. Well, the same store has my kombucha teas. So I end up buying six kombucha teas because guess what? They on sale. So I can pass this up. I got to get it. I got to get I had to, you know. Uh, I end up buying, we found a new, uh, not new, but we found a good spring water called Eternal. Hmm. Well, oh, y'all got one and a half liters? Don't mind if I do. So I went there initially to get one thing and came out with, five different things and I was telling the cashier and she's like let me guess was it the sea moss that you was coming to get it's like yeah how do you know because I'm the only black person in there so I'm getting a little, sus little suspect you know so I'm like what, you you watching me she's like no because this is the only thing that you have one of in your whole basket and I was like oh okay. yeah yeah I guess you're right yeah 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 so but yeah I would feel Y'all feel like it? Did y'all overbuy things that you don't really need in that moment? For me, all the time. Because Target is my, uh, that's my guilty pleasure. And I find, I hate coming home and feeling like I didn't get something that I planned to get. So even if mm -hmm. I go in there for one thing, I'm just, I got to walk around the entire store and just look at everything to make sure a thought doesn't cross my mind. Like, oh yeah, I, I do need one of those. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I typically walk. I can't leave Target without spending a hundred dollars. I've tried; it's never happened. Jerry died. See this? This is why me, you are here, <laughs> because Target is my spot, and I went to Target as well. <laughs> I was only going to Target to get hand sanitizer, hand soap, and Q-tips. I got that. I got no. I got hand sanitizer. Um, so I end up buying three things of Glade plugins. I spent 20 minutes in the plugin sections trying to find the right scent right. that I wanted the house to smell like. Exactly. It's very important. It's very important. Very important. So I got like two different ones. Uh, I got, I got some of my, um, uh, skin product, the stuff that I use, Scotch Porter body wash. I got that. 
get all the way home, didn't even buy the Q-tips. <laughs> And still spent over a hundred dollars. Damn, it's a trap. It's a trap. Trap. Trickery. The, the algorithm. Algorithm. Okay. What about you, big brother? I'm how, many, see. how many extra? How, how many extra bags of gummy bears you buy? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, trying to see who who has twenty minutes to spend looking for bleep. <laughs> okay. M- m- I don't know what was that. What was that too metrosexual for that? <laughs> no, no, I'm, no. I'm just saying, like for me, I'm just always moving, moving, moving. No, no, come on. You know, I'm not even like on that. I I'm know, just like, I, I, yeah. I was just like 20 minutes. I was like, wow. But no, I, I do get what you mean. And I said this to somebody before. Target is a trap. How you can't possibly go in this place to just get paper towels and not come out with four other things. Like, how does this happen? And for me, it's always something else. Like I can go in there for paper towels, but then I realize, oh yeah, I do need that, that, that. The next thing I know, it is like five of the things I bought. So you have to be very disciplined to go into a store mm-hmm. and just get that one thing. Mm. But but Target, I don't know why I like Target. It's not like I go, it's not like I do my grocery shopping there. I just go there to get certain things, but it's like, it's like I know I'm familiar when I go in there. I don't know nobody who works there, but I talk to them like I've been coming there forever. You know what I mean? Like they, you know, like I'm a regular, but it's not the place I want to go to get like towel paper and shit because it's too expensive. I can get it cheaper somewhere else, but it's just like, it's like everything is conveniently set in your way for you to get out. <laughs> mm. Whoever did the layout. It's like it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like what Big Brother said. It, it, it's a trap. It's a trap. So, Joe, what about you? How many sneakers have you bought by accident? A lot. <laughs> no, I I don't. Uh, I stopped doing that. But when I used to go. Uh, Grocery shopping, yeah, it used to be the- like you're smoking. He's like, I stopped doing. That. <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was a sad day, but uh, I don't. Uh, when it comes to regular stuff, you know, I don't. Uh, I used to be pretty bad going there for something. Now what I do, I don't know if I said this before, but now what I do is I order online everything, order everything online. Basically, Walmart or Target, wherever I'm gonna go, I have the app, and I just go order, order, order this, whatever we need, and I just place it. And then uh, I pick a time to go pick it up, and that limits uh, my, uh, you know, because if I go into the store, I'm going to end up buying all kinds of shit. So now I just buy what I need to buy, and now I just select it, order it. I don't have to go into the store anymore. I just drive up to the little spot, and I tell them I'm there. They give me my stuff, and I go home. And it's just easier. I don't have to deal with people. I don't have to wait for people to get in line or fight for the product or um, none of that stuff. You know what I mean? So now it's just, I just do that. Just, I just find, find it to be easier. I, if I'm out and about and, uh, you know, I, I know I'm going to be out and about, I'm like, oh, you know, around five o'clock, I should be coming back home. So I, I press five o'clock. So on my, on my way home, I just stop, pick up and go home. You a smart man. Sometimes. Let's take the compliment, Joe. <laughs> take the compliment before I step the line. Uh, thanks, Will. Thanks, Will. <laughs> uh, but before we go any further, I want to say thank you to all the listeners out there that took the time to listen to the, the premiere episode of League of Kings podcast. Wednesday, we truly appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. It was fun for us to do, and we hope that it was fun for y'all to listen to, and hopefully y'all was able to take something away from it. Anybody want to add anything to that? Yeah. I'd um, just like to say thank Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Joe. Oh. No, go ahead. No, I uh, just want to say thank you to all the all the listeners and uh, you know all the supporters of the show. It's it's always a uh, tough thing, right? It's always trying to wait, trying to figure out who's going to listen to your show, or you know if it, if anybody's going to be listening to it. So, um, I, I believe it was pretty good. So, thank you very much for taking the time. Go ahead, big brother. My bad. 
No, that's good. Uh, same thing. Just want to thank all the listeners, uh, everyone who started following us and streaming and downloading and following us on all the social media. Just thank you. We appreciate it. We have fun doing it. You know, we have fun hanging out together. So we hope that you, like Will said, had some fun listening to it. But we also hope that you took something away from it also. Always appreciate the day ones. And, uh, you know, it's only going to get better from here. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, drop in. We all got way many lines, way more lines to step over. So, <clears throat> wow. A lot, a lot. Uh, <laughs> something I was thinking about on my walk before we move forward. Two things happened on my walk. One, there was a small group of white people walking in front of me. It's not, it's, it's not going to go there, but. Okay. So, but they kept looking behind them, and I'm walking. I don't listen to podcasts. I'm getting caught up, but they keep looking behind, looking at me. So finally, uh, continue my 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 uh, my pace. So I get up beside them. I was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't have, you know, a certain pace. I'm trying to keep. I'm just, I'm just walking and enjoying the weather." And they're like, oh, oh, okay. So basically, in my black mind, why the hell y'all keep looking behind me like I'm about to rob y'all when really they was just trying to make sure they wasn't walking too slow and not holding me up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went around them, talked to them. We had like a good five-minute conversation about weather, and I kept going. So see, Joe, it's not always about racial stuff. Not all the time. Yep, yep. At least, not, at least not this one. But I mean, we'll see what happens tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but something that you said, Joe, that I was th- actually thinking about on my walk is I don't know if y'all feel about this, how y'all feel about this or not. But when I create my episodes, nothing that I do is good. Everything I do. It's great. It's epic. So sometimes I kind of feel some type of way whenever somebody gives me a comment. Good episode. Nah, that was a great episode. The fuck you mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but, and this ain't no, this ain't no shot at nobody. This is how I'm thinking in my mind. Like, no, nah, this was a great episode. This wasn't, it wasn't just good. It wasn't one of these average episodes. This was a great episode. Do y'all ever feel like that as a creator? Go ahead, Flan. You know what? I, I don't like most of my content and all the, most of the time the, the shows that I get compliments on are the shows that I didn't want to put out and didn't feel good about. And so I've I've lost the ability to be able to tell what people are going to resonate with, it. and uh, so any feedback is good feedback to me. There's certain mm-hmm. people that may have something to say. If if I feel <laughs> about what you say, it's because I feel a way about you specifically, and yeah, you know, that does happen right. uh, quite often. But you know, I, I'm trying to get there. Where I need to be more like you. It's like yeah, I'm I'm dope. I'm dope as fuck. I know I am. And so mm-hmm. yeah, thank you for recognizing it. But you're not telling me something I don't already know. I'm working on it. Though. I got you. Okay. Joe, what about you? I think there's different levels of uh, the way you can use it, but I feel like good and great, like it could do different people. It could be, it could mean different things. Like for instance, for me, when I say it's a good episode, that means it was fantastic, right? To me, it's like, it's a good episode. But when I say it's a great episode, that means you made me laugh. And like uh, in a different way, right? Because I, like I said, everybody, everybody likes you know, different podcasts. Everybody likes different, you know, different things. And uh, when I'm just laughing or just, you know, driving to work and I'm just bawling, you know what I mean? Just laughing and it's just like, oh man, this is great. You know, that's because that's how it made me feel at that moment. But good or great or, you know, that's all in the same realm. It just depends on how you feel. That's what I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't take it as they downplaying but, you know, the work I do, mm-hmm. I just feel like, hey, this is, I feel like it was just better than good. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's just, um, 
we had a conversation about, you know, not being cocky, but being self assured about, you know, about myself. Like, no, I'm, this is great. Mm-hmm. You know, you ever get something back from a teacher? Like, dude, this is like my best report that I've ever did. And then she gives you a C. You're like, nah, this has got to be at least a B. This is B. This is B work. This ain't no, no, no C work. Yeah. Read it again. That's how it feels sometimes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got you. Go ahead, um, brother. Oh, no. Any, um, you know, good. Oh, we enjoy it. You know, it's fine with me because I just look at whatever I put out is a genuine, authentic conversation I wanted to have with the audience that I've already had with myself. So whatever you take from it, that's what you took for it. And, you know, I just look at that as just extra icing on the cake. That's why if anyone always, oh, I liked, I enjoy, I always come back with a comment if I choose to respond by it. Well, I just hope you were encouraged by it. So, yeah. So, so do you feel like what I said was aggressive? No, I don't feel like those are aggressive. You should. If you feel as though you put out your your highest work, you should think about it like that. It's not like you're offended by them saying it was good. It's just like you just reassuring yourself and just kind of putting yourself back up. Yeah, this was great work. What do you mean good? It was great. So I looked at mm-hmm. it. You were having a conversation with yourself. So you're not taking in their good. You're just reiterating that it was great to yourself. I didn't look at it like that. No. Nah. Okay. Well, I, I just want to make sure. The more I think about it, because I, I have a situation right now where somebody keeps telling me I'm cute, and that's that's not cool. I'm not cute. I'm I'm a, I'm a sexy beast or something. Like you need to recognize, mm. you need to address it. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah, not cute. So I, I get it. You know, you can't say it's a good episode. It's a great episode. I'm not cute. I'm fine. Like get it right. I, I I'm with mm. you. I understand that. I understand. He said, "Sexy beast." Sexy beast. I think I think that's a great segue. Uh, <laughs> for this next uh, <laughs> topic that we got, um, J Dot, I don't know, randomly, let me ask you this How do you approach a new relationship? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, no, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a random question. I have no idea why you could be asking me that right now, but um, I don't, I don't, I, I've been told I'm a serial monogamous and I, Every relationship to me is, is this is the one. Cause I don't enter relationships uh, often or, you know, with, you know, reckless abandon. Like I, I really, most of the time don't want to entertain a relationship. I'm not interested at all. So if, uh, if something comes across my radar that is uh, attractive enough for me to pay attention to it, then uh, it's probably something I, I really want to do. So most of the time I, I enter relationships like, we're going we gonna to take this all the way. I got a plan for this. And uh, good or bad, you know, whether that's good or bad, at this point, I'm not, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm just, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, do it with your whole self. If not, what's the point of doing it? You know what's crazy that I just peeped just now? Uh-oh. I don't know if anybody peeped this. <laughs> Have y'all seen J-Dot's bird? <laughs> Seen his what? It. His beard. It done. It's it's grew. It's it's flourishing. Let you me remember? see that. You remember? Do, do, I, do I know what you're going to say? Will I already know what you're going to say? I already Shouts. know. That's why I jumped in. <laughs> Shouts to respected root. That's what I was saying. Respected root. Uh, wonderful uh, beard care products. I, no. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. That thing. It. It's all the way. Like um, every uh. Any possible situation, I might have in a hypothetical sense, uh, mm-hmm. you know, completely will. But any possible situation that could be occurring uh, is not a local thing. So, you know. Okay. Okay. Respect okay. the rules. Shut up. Uh, big brother? Uh, approaching new relationships? Um, I think it's for each individual. You know, you got to kind of observe the land, check yourself and see what you want and approach with caution and see if it's possible and just see the person for who they are realistically and not who you want to try to make them into. So yeah, that's the way, as long as you can kind of go in with your eyes wide open, you know, just approach it cautiously. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, Joe, I mean, me and you, we on lockdown. Yep. So I don't know how much um, content we're going to have for this particular one, but how do you approach a new relationship? I, I would say for advice for the people that are looking. <laughs> um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big brother. I mean, I'm, I'm cautious about, uh, you know, what, what you're looking for and make sure that what you're looking for is, is right. You know what I mean? Sometimes people just go in there just blind and they expect too much from other people. And I think if you just kind of, you know, you're like, okay, this is what I'm looking for and just, just stay a little cautious and just see how it, see how it works, see how both of the parties work out together. Um, you know, and that's, that's how I would approach it. Okay. Cautious. Cautious. Yeah. That's a, that's good advice. That really is. That's great advice. Um, I'm not sure to be honest. I've been cuffed for so long. I don't know. And I hear so many stories out there. So I don't really, I, I don't have the best advice for you. Well, how to take your time. How about that? Take your time. Get to know each other. That's my advice. Because I think if you do that and that is successful in the way that you want it to be, everything else is going to fall, going to fall in. I, I get that. So I, I just want to segue off that real quick. You know, just in the hypothetical situation that I was ever uh, pursuing a relationship. Common hypothetical. hypothetical. All right. Mm -hmm. Common has a line. It don't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. And like, that's, mm. that's my mentality. Like it doesn't take, so what is, what is the appropriate amount of time? Like I hear people say that all the time, like it's too soon for this or it's too soon for that. Like how long does it take you to realize you in the presence of something special? And at what point did you stop denying that and just embrace it? I mean, excuse me for jumping in here. I don't think it, there is a timeline. You know, I, I just say, as long as you see the person for who they are, as long as you are going in with your eyes wide open and you're looking at the reality of the person, you can meet someone on Monday and be in a committed relationship on Thursday. But as long as you're seeing the person and once you can even put it together as a relationship, but you still know it's a work in progress and you're still looking at the actual person and then you can see how far you want to take it in that relationship. But I truly believe that it don't take that long to put something together with the expectation for it to evolve. So I look at it that way. So people are like, oh, y'all just met and y'all just did this. Don't worry about what we're doing over here. We got mm -hmm. this, and it's this is a two person situation, you know. So long as you and the same person are on the, you know, one accord with it, don't look at the clock, don't look at the days, go with the feeling and go with the reality of the situation. That's the way I look at it. I heard, I heard, four, day, I heard four days is what I heard. That's what I heard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or four days. I was like, All right, I got you. I mean, there is a song. Uh, by Alexander, Alexander O'Neill. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, it don't sound like they were in a relationship with that. It just sounds like they met up on the weekend. Well, I mean, they was doing something for the last <laughs> six days, big brother. So, I mean, they, yeah, they were doing more than do something. But I was going to, I agree with 98% of what you said because it is about you too. It doesn't matter. And I think I feel like once you are really feeling someone time does not exist because you are in your own space. Let me jump in right there. There's a movie. I'm not sure if everyone has seen it called love Jones. Yes. Mm -hmm. These people met and was mm -hmm. not playing. They got it together. It was all over the place, but they just knew somehow they were supposed to be together. So I like something like that. Do you have you seen the movie on um, the photograph? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the same thing. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And that was a good movie. But what I was gonna what I was gonna say was um it only matters if you haven't worked on yourself. Okay. I like that. Because if you haven't worked on yourself, it doesn't matter if it's 20 minutes, 12 months, three years. If you are not, if you have not put the work in for yourself, it won't matter. Because you all you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your baggage into that relationship. So it may start out tasting like honey, tasting like rabbits, raspberries in the beginning. Yeah, but a few months down the line, it's gonna that honey gonna start tasting stale. Then raspberries gonna start gonna, gonna start to, gonna start to mold. So like the metaphors. Yeah. One thing that what well, one thing that we always, you know, preach on the thing about us podcast. <laughs> Uh, is is make sure you work on yourself. Make sure you always work on yourself. Uh, Joe, yeah. What 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 do you think? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. So you could be, you could be ready. You could be like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is it. But is the other person in the same page? See now you sound like. See, see now you sound like you talking from experience. Go ahead, brother. Let's talk. About- <laughs> Well, I just, just felt that. You know like, what I mean? Uh, I mean, think about it. You might be like, yeah, this is it. This is the one. And everything looks good. But is the other person thinking the same thing? Or is the other person going, hmm, I might, be, I might have to take this a little bit slow. Or, hmm, I don't like this about him or her or whatever. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I think you, you both have to, have to be ready, kind of almost sor- sort of equal at, like, at the same time kind. It kind of has to work naturally. Because if, you know, you're all ready to roll, but the other person's not ready to roll, you're not going nowhere. I don't feel Jay, why, I, I feel I, Jay I, Dot I, over there like, no, I love you. That's enough. <laughs> right. I, Once I love I, you, I, that's enough. That's all we need. I'm not forcing my love on nobody. That, that, that sounds right. Oh, that sounded real bad. And to me too. Yeah. Let's, uh, yes, let's scrap this whole conversation. What else you got with? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the, the way... Joe was describing this story. All I can I was I can picture him with a six pack of beer and a cat at the end of the day, <laughs> trying to trying to figure the shit out. <laughs> Just on the couch, drinking a six pack every day with the cat. Yeah, I mean, I thought about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought about it. Like, oh man, I wonder if the other person feels the same. Right. I mean, and they, you ever see those movies where the people like pour a little beer? Pour a little beer in the in the pet's bowl so they can drink with them. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it. I was. That's what I was picturing. Like he just kind of like, ah, here you go, whiskey. Still got his Walmart vest on from a busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced experienced this, but how y'all feel about uh couples going Dutch? You know what? Go ahead, Joe. But it seems like you have some experience in this. <laughs> so, <laughs> Big Brother, where is rolling? He's like, "What's going on over here?" Um, is is that the part where they you you both have to spend? Right? Is that what it is? Split yeah. The, split the bill. Yeah. Split so, bill. I think when you're dating, I think when you're dating, I. I but see this again. This is this could be also a cultural thing, right? Passed down to from like my parents and stuff like that. It could be uh, for us is we 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 pay for everything, you know the 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 man the man the mm-hmm. male the person that's asking the person out pays for it, right? Because you're asking them out, right? That's that's how I grew up. However, once you get married, uh, I believe that it all kind of combines. It's uh, your money's my money, that kind of thing, right? You're in a family household, and I I. I it's no problem with uh, we do it all the time. You know, uh, for instance, this, this last trip, uh, I paid for the hotel and all the entertainment stuff and, uh, like the roller coaster and all that kind of stuff. My wife was like, Hey, I'll take care of the food, you know? And it's just a, a uh, it's a team, right? Once you, you get married, mm-hmm. you become a team 
and you have it's it's about helping each other out. But I I feel like at the beginning, yeah, I mean at, at the beginning, if you're asking somebody out, I feel that it's kind of like okay, let's put it this way. It's kind of like if I invite if I invite you out, Willie, and I go, hey, Will, uh, let's go out and have some steaks, man. And then uh, you know I'm inviting you. Like if I invite you, that means I'm paying for you. Like I'm inviting you. Let's go get something to eat. You know what I mean? It's different. It's different in saying, hey, we should we should go get something. Yeah, we should. But if I go, hey, I want to invite you to dinner, that means that I'm paying for the bill. Uh, that's what I that's what I feel it it should be, right? Yeah, I know. Like you said, like once you get married, I won't even say once you get married. I think once you in a really committed relationship, yeah, I think it's it kind of starts kicking in there. It it can, it could, uh not always because in some situations in marriages, some people, the man still fronts the bill, whether he invites or not invite. Mm -hmm. But I think in definitely in marriages, it it is like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty Mm -hmm. much, I get the bill and she, 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 well, I, I get the tip. You know, kind kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So I I def I'm definitely with you on that. Let me ask you this, Joe. Do you ever get surprised sometimes if your wife be like, nah, babe, I got it. At first. But then, the, but then, but then like <clears throat> because we know as married men, if she's gonna take the bill and the tip, like like why well, get the tip? Like, nah, I got it. Don't worry about it, baby. But she's giving you that look, so you know the whole time on the way home, we're like, "Dude, what I gotta do for this?" Because she's gonna want me to do something strange, and you know, I gotta put all I got plate. was a, all I got was a lobster pizza, and she's acting like now I gotta be, uh, uh, what's her boy, uh, the the one the, the one star? I can't think of his name. Ron Jeremy. But anyway, or, it's not it's Ron Jeremy or oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm just <laughs> using that for example. So like now, so so now I gotta do something strange over a lobster pizza and some cheddar biscuits that weren't even cooked all the way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but so just, <laughs> but the the other way around, she's like, What you you buy me dinner? Well, so what? Well, so, so you think you're gonna get some? Hmm. Have you have you not felt that? Yeah, before, Joe? yeah. I mean, at first it was like, hey, let me pay for this. Like, hmm, you know. But but I was always used to paying, which is to mm-hmm. me it was weird for her to offer to pay for stuff. Uh, but then when I got used to it, I'm like, oh, okay, it's just you know we're good. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, sometimes you do get the feeling that okay, what's going on here? You know I mean, not necessarily that they want me to do something weird. You know what I mean? But it's, I mean, you never know. Jose, exactly. I don't know what we're talking about. Like that. <laughs> don't worry, J. Dot. These sound like personal experiences. So I'm just letting them get it all out like good therapy. <laughs> no. like, go ahead, free associate. No, Yo, this is a safe place. This is a safe place. Right. Look at me, Joe. It's a safe place. It's, it's cool. Don't lie to the people, Willie. Don't, don't, don't lie to the folks. No, I, right. I, I don't. I, I think it's. Uh, I don't know. I never thought about it about being weird, you know, but in the other way around. Yeah, I do. Like, well, you want some, you know, like if you pay for it or you pay for something, you know, I feel like some people are like, oh, you want to, you want some, you know, and, and you're not going to get any cause, cause you paid. So yeah, I mean that I get that. I understand. But the other part is like, no, I, you know what I mean, Hey, random, this is random. And then we're going to get back on track. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Joe, this is another married man question. You have a like, say it's like, so like you about to go out, you know, you getting ready to go out with your boys, you put your good, you know, body spray on or whatever. And she looks at you, your wife be like, where are you going to smell like that whore? You have a, she never, <laughs> what is going on in your house? Buddy? <laughs> Jada, me and you just in the lounge. They have, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, uh, I haven't gotten that, but I, I've, I've seen it. Uh, from okay. from a friend from other people actually where uh, we were like hey let's go over I'm picking you up and then that's it would be a lot more than than the hoe but 
you know, you piece of shit, where are you going? You know what I mean? Like, whoa, like what's going on here? You know what I mean? But I have, I have experienced that, uh, with my eyes from other individuals that we've gone out to say, watch a baseball game or something. So, mm-hmm. but that's real. See if it is real. Right, right now. Like this, this, this is getting crazy. Hey, <laughs> we say that. I'm, I'm seeing Fee in a whole new light now. So I, I don't know what's happening over there. I, I didn't say it was her, but it, it, it okay. happens. Okay. It happens. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so let's get let's get back. J Dot going Dutch. How you feel about it? First, I want to touch on something that Joe said because nothing nothing feels more disrespectful to me than if I go out to dinner with one of my homies and they ask if we want to split the bill. It's like, of course we want to split the bill. This is not a date. I don't understand what you saw two dudes sitting at this table and you just up. <laughs> One of us was paying for the other. Like that's, I need I need wait staff to stop. That. I, I guess it's a different era, so you got to. But that bothers me. But um, no, I'm I'm with Joe. Like I, I 100 expect to pay. I'm okay with paying. With one caveat, I do appreciate a courtesy reach. If 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 a woman is out with me and the bill comes. I want just just make a move like you about. That's all I need. Like reach for your purse. Or something. I'm gonna tell you I got it. Don't worry about it. You know every time, but just don't sit there like oh, the bill. <clears throat> you know it's your you know it's your time. Like spotlight on you. Like I just I just appreciate a nice courtesy reach. When I was but, married, my wife would come out the house with no ID, no mm, wallet, nothing. And I, mm, like so you just knew. That you wouldn't want to pay for nothing tonight. Like you just understood that when you left the house like that. Just, just you know, put on a show real quick. Just pretend like you're gonna do it. The one thing that I that bothers me is where you wanna go. I don't know. Are you hungry? Yeah. What you got to move? What you in the move for? I don't know. Food. Okay, what kind of food? I don't know, something warm. Okay, what kind of food that you want warm to eat? I don't know, I hadn't really thought about it. But you hungry though. Yeah, I'm hungry, I'm starving. I can eat anything. Okay, so what do you want? I don't know. Am I the only, y'all, am I the only one? Look. I'm putting my life in danger over here, and Joe, you ain't saying shit. No, I'm agreeing. I'm like, so, I'm, I'm processing. My wife, Biana, is like twenty feet down the hall, and I'm putting my life on the line. And you sitting there chuckling up, thinking about whiskers and your six pack of beer. Come on, man, man up! Don't be no Mitch. <laughs> The worst is after you have to sit through all them I don't knows, and then you're like, all right, well, we go on the Maggiano's or whatever. No, I don't really want that. I just, what you want? <laughs> what you yeah, want? That's got to be the most annoying thing to me. It's like, man, you know what I mean? And you get there, and they're oh, I'm not really feeling this. What? You picked it. You know what I mean? So it's, I feel like it's a guessing game, and you just got to guess just right. And sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. That's how I take it. I mean, sometimes, I, you know, she's going to be like, this is great food. And sometimes she's going to be like, oh, it wasn't that good. So, I mean, it is what it is. It is. It is. It's what we chose. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. We, we, we chose that life. Yep. Big brother, uh, how how you feeling about going Dutch? You don't have nothing, do you? You just... <laughs> I'm just laughing. Um, no, when you initially start dating, the man—I'm just gonna say it bluntly—the man pays, and mm-hmm. when you're in a relationship, if she offers to pay, but mm-hmm. it should be known that you're paying. So that's how I feel about it. What if she invites you out? Does does the man you still should, pay? You should expect to pay, even if she invites you out. Yeah, like you should have your money ready. But she invited me. I didn't want to yeah. go. She want to go. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe she's looking for that courtesy from us. Or courtesy. maybe she's just hungry and trying to get a free bill, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh-oh. I'm just waiting for that fork behind Will to disappear. And then Will, <laughs> right. while I go out. 
nah, and there will be like people that's the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not that far from the kitchen, so it'll probably be a skillet or a pot flying across. It won't be the fork. <laughs> I want it to be the fork. <laughs> you want it to be the fork? <laughs> All right, all right. That was uh, G. Like that. we'd be like, What that fork do? <laughs> hey, brother, watch too many true crime shows. That's what we, we start at that. Yeah, I um, I intentionally made some channels disappear, like oxygen, mm. snap, certain. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you, you are watching way too many of these in one day. Okay. Hey, brother, when was the last time you were humbled? <clears throat> um, this was a wasn't too far back. Um, this woman gave me a compliment when I was on the phone. She gave me a compliment about my looks, and you know, I just got high in my head. I was like, "Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah." As I'm talking, like, "Yeah," she just said to me, and as I'm telling the person what the woman said to me, I just fall all the way down the steps. I just take this big... <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't one of those falls where you could play it off like you stumble. It was the complete fall. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, just as I'm thinking, like, yes, you know, you look like, oh, she's like, oh, you are so... I was like, oh, thank you. You know, just like... And then, three, two, one, like five mm-hmm. steps, right? <laughs> Hmm. So I was humble. It brought me back to earth. Like, all right. right. Instant karma. Hmm. Why I gotta be karma though? <laughs> <laughs> Jay does I that good. I'm, I'm glad he fit. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, well, did you look good while you did it? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So when I landed, I landed like this. You know how you just like like a superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was like, "Yeah, vanity doesn't work. Just be humble." How long? How, how long did you lay there? Like, was five seconds? Because it took a second for, for me to realize. That <laughs> you know how it takes, you, you you know how it takes a second for you to realize you're on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was like four, three, two, one, and then you know. There were people outside, so I had to like kind of get up. I'm like, oh. oh no! But luckily, I didn't have that extra thing where people run over. Are oh, you all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> J Dot, when was the last time you was humble? Probably at work recently. Uh, you know, I took on this position, and I'm kind of looked at as the escalation point. If you can't figure it out, you know, it comes to me, and I'm supposed to be the final say on some things. Uh, when enough people look at you like that, you start to think that, yeah, you you know everything and you know what you're talking about and my word is final. And I think I was having a conversation and there happened to be another manager in the area and I'm explaining, I'm not talking to him, I'm not talking to the, the other manager, I'm talking to one of my guys and I'm explaining to him, you know, why something works a certain way and why he should do this and the guy just, and in the, in the nicest, most direct way, he didn't say, he didn't say you're wrong. He just immediately corrected the situation with the correct information and then kind of walked off as if to say, I don't even need to stand here to you know, <laughs> like to ease up the situation. I'm going to make sure your employee knows you have no idea what you're talking about. And then I'm going to leave and you're going to have mm. to live in it. You have to stand mm. there with this other man and just be wrong for a few minutes. And so, yeah, that definitely humble. So like a mic drop. Like, mm. yeah, just mic drop walked off on. Mm. Yeah. That, that sounds like one of those awkward, stares like he's staring at you and then you stare at him like well you still gotta do your job don't, <laughs> right. don't just, don't just stare at me like that like you ain't gonna do your job because i said something wrong yeah yeah that's when you got hit with it i've been wrong before i'll be wrong again you know go back to what you was doing hmm. i was gonna say the same thing when i read this i had the same not not like that but <laughs> It's uh it was it, it was at work. It was at work where uh, well, it was like let me clarify now that like that. <laughs> I was at I was at work and it was a delivery and somehow I think it was like two items, but it was a significant amount of dollar. 
and we don't know where the hell it went to. I signed for it, and I missed doing the paperwork for the discrepancy, which it happened like two months ago. Anyways, I was like, well, let me go double check it because I know I've seen it. I know I did it. Can't find it. I had to eat that one. So I was like, ah, uh, because I'm known for being um, particular about my paperwork, being careful, you know, a really good person who who evaluates, observes things, and I miss something. So I was like, damn, you know, I think sometimes the universe finds a way to make sure that you don't get too big headed or to or keeps you leveled to say, hey, hey, you you good, but you're not perfect. You know what I mean? So it I think we all have that situation happen. Some people don't recover from some people don't know how to handle that. But Joe, what about you? When was the last time you was home? I'm sure uh there's been a lot of times through my life that I've been humbled. I can't think of uh, recent. I from when I started uh, this career that I that I do is um, it's all about learning, right? And paying attention, and uh, you have to learn from somebody else, right? Um, and I, I, that I can remember is you know I used to I was I was younger, of course, and um, sometimes you feel like you know everything, and uh, basically somebody say you don't know everything, and uh, this is why it failed or whatever, right? So uh, from that moment on, I basically, um, you know, I listen. And if I don't know something, I don't try to assume or guess that I know everything. Um, I'm always in learning mode is what I do. So that's that's how I look at everything. No matter if I know it really well, uh, there's always somebody that's better than you. There's always somebody that has, it's just thinks, thinks a lot more clear or it's just a lot better at that position that you do right that trade that you do or whatever you do so no matter if you have 30 years experience right um so now i just i'm on listening mode uh, no matter if i already know i'm gonna listen uh because i don't know anything i don't know everything and uh you know maybe something that that person says i can use right and i can i can learn from it so um i try not to put myself in those kinds of situations i try to remain humble all the time, as much as I can, right? As much as I can. Um, even when I'm like, that's bullshit. You know, I know that this is right. I don't say nothing. I just stay quiet. And I'm like, oh, shit, I was wrong. That's right. You know, he, he's right about this. But I try not to act a certain way to offend anybody or to, because uh, usually, uh, you know, a lot of us are, are viewed as leaders. And, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And, you know, I go, yeah, that's, you know, you were right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I try not to put myself in that position. I try to just stay the same and and listen always. And that's kind of that's kind of how I do it. I get that, and I and I and I know you're married, so we we have to continue to stay humble. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can take this so many different ways right now, but I'm just gonna well, let that let that go. Um, Stay on this side of the line, Will. Stay on this side. <laughs> it's hard. It's it's hard. It, I, I really okay. I will. <laughs> yeah, I, I... Joe. Yes. Who taught you how to shave, man? Hmm. Well, partially my dad, partially, and the rest myself. Just uh, cutting myself and figuring out. How to do it? I used to watch my grandpa, so I'm a good visual learner. So I would just look at my grandpa. I would just watch him shave, and he was just like, "You have to do it this way." And that's I just started doing it when I started getting some hair. I started doing it on my own and cutting myself, and that's how I did it. You know, my dad doesn't have a whole lot of hair, uh, so he couldn't. You know, it's hard for him to teach me how to shave or do anything. But my grandpa, on the other way, he. Shaved every day. He was one of those guys that always yeah, shaves every day. Even if there's no hair, he shaves and he oils his hair and all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? And I used to watch mm -hmm. him. I'm like, why is he, what is he doing? And I, I, a lot of stuff I learned on my own. My dad was a baseball player and he, and he also worked 
these jobs where he was hardly around. So camping, shaving, all that kinds of stuff is stuff that I've basically have learned on my own. So. so. Big brother, what about you? Um, I actually taught myself how to shave. Um, kind of like with Joe. Um, why am I not surprised? <laughs> why? I'm not even surprised by that. It was like I, I, I honestly expected for you to be like, yeah, I just woke up one day and just started shaving. I didn't even have a razor. I just like I used a butter knife that was dull, <laughs> and I. And, and it wasn't even the back side of the butter knife. It was like the part with the ridges. And somehow it was a clean shape. That's that's is go ahead. Just go. Hell, I don't want to tell your story. Go ahead. Nah, that's good. No, nah, actually, I taught myself how to shave. Um, because, you know, kind of like I was going to say with Joe, you know, dad in the house, but busy or, you know, or like I always say, your father can be there, but they can also be physically present but not present so down the line i i just wound up teaching myself how to shave so yeah okay j dot i don't i don't have an interesting story or anything like that it's probably the the gillette man on the commercial or something i was just trying to i don't know mirror that which is why i don't shave i don't shave myself at all to this point i got the barber has to do it Anytime I do it, I'm gonna mess it up horribly. I've given up on that a long time ago. Tragic, no dad story. Okay. Well, if you don't, I I, I do it for you. So I got into a fight with a crackhead, right? <laughs> Wait, Joe. I started leaning in. I like, like how is this gonna teach him how to shave? <laughs> I don't. I don't have one either, y'all. <laughs> My dad didn't teach me shit, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the whole point of the question. Where, if any future fathers or current fathers are listening, it's a mm-hmm. bonding moment between you and your child, mm-hmm. teaching them how to shave. So you know, just hearing us give our various you know stories of like, yeah, how did I learn how to shave? So you know, hopefully a father or someone who has, you know, that's taking care of a, a child will say, you know what? I see it now as a bonding moment. It's not so much as teaching them how to shave. That child will always remember who taught them how to shave. Just like we know who either taught us or did not teach us how to shave. Mm-hmm. You know what this reminds Very me much. of? Reminds me of a lethal weapon when Danny Glover is teaching his son how to shave. When, uh, when the Danny Glover shot his friend, it's because uh, they yeah. were doing drugs. And at that mm-hmm. moment right there when they're, uh, even though it was a tragic moment, it was a bonding moment for, for both yeah. of them. You know, what I remember about that is I watched that with my dad and yet he still did not teach me how to shave. <laughs> that was like when, when that was one of those movies where you got a glimpse of what it was, it could be like mm-hmm. to have a, uh, a, uh, Help me out with this, big brother. To have your father physically in your life, you know what I mean. To to show you things like to, to teach you, because shaving, as we know it, is part of those steps to you are becoming a man. Mm-hmm. You know, traditionally, it, it, it's what it is. Oh, you. You got a little hair in your face. Well, let let me show you how a man shave. So yeah. traditionally, it was like one of those stepping <clears throat> stones that you was becoming a man. So, yeah. Joe, all you all you really did was just add, you know, more gas to the fire. That um, how many black homes have absent fathers in them? Whoops. That's, well, that's, that's, but what about this? Because right? I was thinking about this, you know, for my particular situation. If I had a son. Mm-hmm. I would want to be present and physically present and, and involved and in, in helping him understand how to be a man. That'd be one of the moments where like, I don't, I don't, I'm not, not teaching you how to shave because I'm, you know, being neglectful. I don't know. And I don't, I don't even want to, I don't want to teach you. 
I shave when I have to out of the need to groom, but not, but I usually end up with razor bumps and all kinds, which is why I don't do it. So it's like, I, I don't even, I don't have that to pass on to you. I wish I did, but I don't, you know. Jay Dot, my stepson, I literally watched my stepson tie his own tie. I can't, I get the clip ons. I don't know how to do this shit. My dad didn't teach me how to tie a tie. You know what I'm saying? So if, if if he said, "Hey, can you show me how to tie my tie?" I'd be like, "Yeah, let's uh, let's go YouTube and uh, let's figure it out together." I mean that that's that's what I would been there. That's what I would would have done. But you know that's still saying? a bonding moment, though. Not yeah, to cut you off, yes, yeah, but you know, right. hopefully, yeah. everyone still looks at that like that's still your bonding moment. Yeah, it it is, but in the back of my mind, it's like shit. My dad didn't teach me this. So I have to go learn this as a man because I wasn't I wasn't wasn't taught this. And for some men, pride gets in the way because that's a moment where you in front of your son have to admit you don't you don't know something. And you don't know yeah. something that seems to be like a core part of man. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how to shape. Like how do I say that to so for some men they might decide to just opt out and pretend like it's not a thing that needs to happen because they don't they don't want to have to go through the process of saying to their child who looks at them like they're he man. This is where I'm deficient. You I know, know, like, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Joe. Uh, you know, sometimes we we forget not to make any excuses for any fathers out there and anything like that, but sometimes we don't realize uh, how how hard our fathers work or what situations, what stress stressful situations they're going to. They have depression. They're stressed out about bills. There, you know, and sometimes life is busy, man. And sometimes life gets in the way on those special moments where, you know, it's just the dad's up to here with problems and he's trying to figure out how to bring food to the house and pay the bills. And he's like, I'm not going to teach you how to shave right now. I'm trying to freaking pay the house. You know what I mean? So sometimes things, life, I believe that sometimes it gets in the way and not, you know, for them to be looked at as bad fathers. It's just that, you know, life is hard. And, and sometimes there's a lot of other stuff that, you know, that uh, they're thinking of, right? I mean, if you saw when we were kids, um, we didn't know anything about how it was until we got older. We're like, holy shit, this is stressful. You know what I mean? With all these kids and all this stuff and all the mortgage payment and all that and work and work people and fighting. And you know what I mean? So it's, I sometimes feel that some parents are good parents and they're looked at as bad parents, but, you know, sometimes they're going through stuff. I agree. I uh, I do. I agree, but I'm still going to play devil's advocate because I just, I don't want to say it's a cop out, Mm -hmm. but I still feel like it's one of those responsibilities as a parent. Not, I'm not going to just say the shaving and kind of tie, but it's one of the responsibilities as a parent where our job is to help you grow to be an adult. You know what I mean? So even though it's just tie to tie and it's just saving, those are just little things that can be added to make a bigger ball. And like I said, I'm I'm playing devil's advocate. You know what I mean? But that that's just like when my dad, there was plenty of time in between watching John Wayne, you know, rob, you know, kill robbers and his his six Milwaukee's best, you know, uh cool as light to where he could have shown me how to tie tie, you know, or hell. Back then, it was the straight razor. It wasn't no damn Gillette's. It was, you know, it was a straight razor. You know, you had to open the the clip and drop the razor. So, those humbling moments can get. I should have mentioned this when you asked the last time I was humble, and this goes, this touches on this topic and something we talked about before. The other day, when my daughter looked at me and asked me if I could teach her how to swim, like that, that messed me mm-hmm. up. Like, like I. You, you know something I, I you know something I, want, I was going to ask uh, you Joe and Dot 
because y'all got younger kids right now, right? So at what point are y'all going to have to explain that at one at one time cars actually had a key that you had to turn to start the car? Like how, how are y'all going to feel explaining that to your kids at that point? Because right now we have push start. Yep. And then some, and then at some point, all cars may even be where you can just do it by your phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there is. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm I'm sure some of the Audis and yeah, Lexus some of the have some Teslas and stuff. You know, you can do it with your phone. Mm-hmm. But at some point, all cars. How 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 do y'all think they're going to be able to explain that? Because it, because it's going to be kind of like one of those. Uh, uh, what what it, what they call those when things used to exist and all of a sudden you can't find, find them? The Mandela effect. It's going to be a Mandela effect at some point for y'all. How how, how y'all going to be able to explain that? I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's kind of like when uh, I was growing up and we were riding in the car and you know there was a the cassette player, but then I'll go mm-hmm. into my grandma's car and there wasn't a cassette player, and then I was like, where the hell is this shit? And it was like an eight track underneath the seat. <laughs> So like, what the hell is this thing? A BCR? You know what I mean? So, uh, and <laughs> yeah. you know, just explaining the time. The times change, man. You know, I mean, it's uh, these kids these days, man. And she's four. When the time she gets to drive, it's this is gonna be part of history. Like, whoa, they used to have something to turn the cars on. You know, it's you used to have to put <laughs> pants in it. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's just gonna be a completely different world. You know, big brother. When was the last time you had a hug? When, when was the last time you had to ask a friend or a family member and, and say, hey, man, I I, I need a hug? Um, me, I'm just a hugger anyway. So, you know, I don't go in too far in between that because I believe in hugs, you know, just that transfer of energy just to encourage other someone but yeah um that i have to actually ask someone for a hug i would say probably from a relative like just because it's like like a someone in my support system where i just just like oh and i i was just you know vulnerable enough to say you know i just need a hug today and you know we just embraced you know just encouraged each other yeah so yeah i have no problem asking for a hug if it's someone that i know is trusted, meaning that they already are, they have a good spirit. I'm not taking a hug from someone that, you know, I was like, yeah, I don't know what this hug is all about. Joe, what about you? Yeah, I'm kind of similar to Big Brother. I, I'm a, you know, kind of hugging type of guy and, you know, hug you from the side, you know, what's up, man? You know what I mean? Just, uh, I don't know. I, that's how I, that's how you know that I like you. Like I think you're you're good, you're a good person. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna go up to a stranger and be like, "What's up?" and just give him hugs. You know, just kind of like a side, like a bro hug, like "What's up, man?" Or when we're playing around, joking around. I'll, you know what I mean? Just I don't know. That I I never really had to ask for a hug. I'm usually the the one that is like the support. So you know, I'm the I'm the support one, and and I give hugs. I give hugs, but you know. So, in order in order for me to know that you like me, you gotta give me a hug. That's what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> no, Is just no. Like you know, if 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 you know, like oh, he no, he he likes him. Like he's, you know, that means that you you mean something to me. If I was to be like yeah, or just to like kind of like, you know, hit you with my shoulder yeah, or something, okay. that that to me is considered part of. You know, like, like kind of like a semi hug. You know, what I mean, it's a bro. I mean, you can't go. You know, you're dudes. You know, unless you know, it's kind of weird. But like. A, a, a bro hug or like that. You, know I mean? you know what I mean? But I, no, it's 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 your um it's your love language. I yeah, get it. Yeah. It's your love language. It's you and Big Brother, it's your love language. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. J Dot, uh I feel like me and you are gonna be on the same page. So go ahead and answer for us, please. Yeah, I I, I agree with you on that. Um I'm toxic and many and not saying it in a proud way. It just it is what it is. I am who I am. And this is one of those places where very much so. So I feel the need to say this, you know, just so no one gets the wrong idea and nobody crosses any lines, Willie. Uh, you know, I just need you know people to know where I stand. I'm not a hugger. I'm not. 
Breach. Physical contact. You can. Mm-hmm. If we not fucking, please keep a certain distance. You know, and, and if we, if you would do, I need two feet between your chest and my chest at all times. That's just a requirement mm-hmm. for me. Uh, and it used to be a punishment when I was coming up uh, for my mother to make my sister and I hug. We fought so much mm-hmm. that like it was a punishment. Go hug your sister, and we do like the quickest like finger tap on the back. You know, I I did it. I hugged her. Kind of hugs. I, yeah, I'm I'm not a hugger. It makes me uncomfortable when people just want to hug you. It's like I, I'm I'm good. I don't I don't know that I'm in a situation where I feel like I need human physical contact to make me feel better. It probably gonna make me feel worse. So uh, that's just it, it. I'm not proud of it. It just is what it is. So I'm, that's my answer, Willie. Thank you. Thank you for speaking for us, Jay and I. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, See, Joe, we just going to jump out of nowhere and hug see, at the same time. See, the, 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 the thing is, is like us huggers, we, we know who are the non-huggers. So we never cross yeah. the line. That's the worst part because you know I don't want the hug and you force your hug on me. It's assault. That's what it is. It is assault. <laughs> and then, and then, like, cause we we can see you get closer, like you, and then you like your your shoulders start twitching because you you want to give us a hug, but you know that we don't want it. When you do like, this, when your arms are open, you like come get this hug. It's kind of like a step brothers where him and his brother was trying to hug, but it was like yeah. mushing each other's face and like elbowing each other. It, it's like that. Um, I am not. A hugger. I remember I had a co-worker that would randomly come up to me and give me a hug. And I'm like, what in the hell are you doing? I'm a hugger. I am not. I need you to back up, man. Because this, I, I can't, one, I'm married. And two, I, no, you just not going to randomly just put your body oil on me. And no, that's that's not going to happen. Um, I do... I agree with everything that J Dot said. I'm I'm sorry, um, but that is something that I do struggle with with my wife because she is a hugger. That's her body. No, that's her not her body. That's her love language. You know, it's hugging and you know cuddling and stuff like that. Have a time limit. It's like we go in one, two, three. Then we release. One, two, three, release. You know what I mean? I'm I'm good. But at the same, I don't want to say, I don't, I won't say toxic. I say um it's right there. I'm having issues with my words today. Yeah, I cannot come up with words today. Trauma. I think it's it's part of my body trauma. You know, too long, too long with hugs, I get uncomfortable. Sometimes I need time to recharge. And if you're in my space, I can't do that. You know what I mean? So it it does it does suck. And then there's time and then there's it time. It, it it does. It does because sometimes it's 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 okay to say that you need a hug. You know, uh, there's times when I know that my wife needs a hug, so I give her a hug. I give her a big bear hug. You know what I mean? That that's me stepping out of my comfort zone to help her comfort zone. That's something that we have to do as men sometimes step out of our comfort comfort zone we have to um but i do i I give her her hugs especially when i know she's having a bad day mentally physically i i give her that because she needs that from me and as her husband as a king i i'm i'm obligated and this is my duty yeah hugging my daughter comes naturally like that i'm not a Mm -hmm. hugger I know when she needs a hug. And and there are times where I just want to hug her. But that's the exception to the rule. Nobody should see that and think, oh, yeah, he just enjoyed. No, don't do that. You know, that's yeah. my problem. Yeah. That- it, 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 it's, it's, it's okay. As men, it is okay to say sometimes I need a hug. 
there, there is times where I do need a hug, but I don't, I don't want, I don't, don't get comfortable while we doing it. You know, don't, this is not a 30 second hug. No, the three second made it went to five or six seconds. Then, you know, I'm good waiting to exhale and then I'm good. But it is so it, it is okay. I have a story. Uh, I may talk about it next episode. I have a story where I actually offered a guy, another man, a hug because I felt like that's what he needed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I mean, see, like I'm an asshole, but I'm not like an asshole. Well, we know you're not really like that. You just <laughs> you're funny. That's all it is. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but I mean, I, I sometimes people take take my character as me, you know, being asshole-ish, which is nah, fine. That, 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 nah, I mean, I, I get I, it. Uh, I got I a story you know. about being hugged by a bum. You know, What's up? I got a story about me being hugged by a bum. That's probably <laughs> part of my trauma as it is now. Hey, he didn't hit the lip, did he? Did Did, did he give you a bump on? He hit me with the bump on the lip. Thank God, you know. But do we come? Do, do we do we have time for this? Because I'm I'm here for it. No, it, it was just, just the quick story. One of the situations where I'm a I, I give money if I have money in my pocket and I see you and you need it, I'm gonna give it to you. But I I pulled out and this is why I don't do this anymore. I pulled out whatever I had in my pocket and the twenty was on the top, and so he saw the twenty and got that gleam in his eye, <laughs> eye right, bro, like. Here you go. And then I gave him a 20, and that was, I guess that was too much for him in the moment. And he just came right in. And it was nothing I like nothing I could do about it. I couldn't stop it. It was happening. Uh, so now I, I make sure to keep the ones on top. So, you know, I can go with the small bills. I don't care. Too okay. short, too short this this like you keep the twenties on top and the fifties on the bottom. That's what too short. I don't carry cash no more. I don't even carry cash. That's that's my excuse now, man. I ain't got no cash on me. I w- I want to. I wish I could help, bro. But no cash on me. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm the same way. I am. The, I do it intentionally. I do. All right. <laughs> now it's time for the health as well segment. We need to get like a little uh, jingle for this. Like a little, you know. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Joe will get it for us. Well, I'll find one. All right. Uh, I'm picturing what Joe gonna come up with. <laughs> Joe he'll, brings something like go to the doctor. He'll do with the intro. <laughs> I am somebody. I was like, what we doing? Right, was, right. I'm uh, I'm I'm interested in this next. I'm interested in this health as well. Say uh, the importance of proper sleep. How many hours do y'all think we need, Joe? I, I believe. How many, how, how many hours do you need to function? I function in very limited hours, and uh, I know one day it's gonna catch up. But uh, I am a max six hours, um, and I feel great. Um, That's not bad. I That's eat, not bad. Six hours is not bad. Yeah, and. Uh, if I if I sleep more than eight, I feel groggy, exhausted. I mm-hmm. uh, can't think. But for some reason, if I sleep less hours, I am like ready to roll, and I'm sharper. Um, so I mean, I think it's uh, for, it's, it's individual. Um, I know that there's like, for instance, some people like Elon Musk and all these other dudes that are constantly doing all this kinds of. They those guys sleep like four or five hours, you know. So it just depends on. You know, I just I just don't sleep because I'm I'm a morning person anyways. So if I go to bed at twelve, I'm back up at four four thirty. You know, and I'm just uh, like I said, I feel better. I feel better uh, the, if I sleep six hours. I'm good, man. That's that's my target. I have it on my watch. That's my target thing: six hours. Okay. Okay. I, oh, I have sleep apnea, so I have a CPAP machine. So. I, I get between six and, and eight hours. Um, 
I have ran on three hours and not missed a beat. I've slept 10 hours and like, I can't get right today. <laughs> so I think, I think my medium is eight, seven to eight hours. It's like anything after that, I'm sleeping all day. Cause I, there's no point in me going outside. I, I, I can't function, but sleep is very, very important, especially to your metabolism. Mm -hmm. Very important. Big brother. What about you? Uh, for me, I'm seven, seven and a half. Like I, like for me to be at my best, I need to be seven, seven and a half, you know, just like you, like you just touched on it where once I learned that bad eating habits come into play, when you start missing your sleep and you're not sleeping right, you know, or you're, or, you know, you're staying up too late. So you're eating everything. But for me, my sweet spot is seven, seven and a half hours. I'm at my best with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I I am still doing the vegetarian thing. And that's one of the things I tell Fee. I was like, man, it's like my sleep is a whole lot better. Whole lot better since I, you know, way more fruits, way more vegetables. I wake up, I'm not groggy. I don't feel all sluggish. I'm like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. And that's I'm what I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize how attached your health is to your sleep pattern and how important it is to get you like you like you always see how a baby is fussy when it's sleep is thrown off, it's not getting enough. We as people, we're the same way. If you don't figure out your sleep pattern that works for you and kind of stick to that, you know, you're just going to throw your whole system off. Yeah. And I also think like the the body, the mind is really powerful. So uh, we, the body adjusts. The body's going to adjust uh, most of the time because it wants you to survive, wants you to live. Did you, did you know that there's a, there's a thing? There is a, uh, a study that, I know this is weird. I'm, I'll do it real fast. But there's a study that uh, your brain doesn't want you to do anything because your brain, all it does is it's it's for survival. Everything is for survival. It doesn't want you to exercise. It doesn't want you to do nothing. It just wants you to sit on the couch and eat because it's trying to keep you alive longer. Isn't that weird? But then they have the, yeah. you have to work out to live longer. You have to do this to live longer. But the brain just wants to suppress you because it thinks it's going to make you live longer that way. It's crazy. It's a crazy Wait, study. Wait, what? Yeah. So Say that. Start, start from the start to say say that shit from the beginning. I'm sorry. All right. So does it? Uh, it's mind blowing. What you so, just said. So so the brain, right? The brain is here for for us to survive. That's that's what the brain is here for. Okay. It, mm -hmm. it wants us to live the longest. So it doesn't want us to do anything. It doesn't want us to exercise. It doesn't want us to do any activity. It wants to keep you out of danger. Uh, you know that's why the 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 mechanism of your body works for instance if somebody's going to punch you what is the first thing that you do is you you go into the fetal position right just how you were born that's the that's the body that's the brain putting you in that mode uh when you get scared for instance so all this stuff like when you're when you're gonna when you don't feel good when your body your brain detects uh detects some stuff it, it makes you pass out right because it wants the blood flow right so all this stuff that the brain does to your body um it wants to keep you alive longer. So it thinks that the the least amount of stuff that you do is going to keep you alive longer. But people want you to work out, right? There's If you work out, you live longer. You, you It's better for you, better for your health. And yeah, absolutely. But your brain doesn't want you to do that. Your brain wants you to chill and just sit on the couch. Doesn't want to ex ex expend any energy whatsoever. Just wants you to just sit on the couch and chill because I think it's going to make you live Longer, because that's what your brain's for. It's to, it's your defense mechanism. Your brain is what wants you to live. It's what is thinking. You know, we're gonna we're gonna live longer this way. It's crazy. I'll, yeah. I'll find that report, and uh, I'll I'll show you. And all the stuff that happens, like for instance, that like the thing with the fetal position and all that. That's why everybody goes in the fetal position when something hurts. You go into because your brain puts you in that mode. That is your safe spot. That's the way you're born. Uh, that's why when women have like. You know, they're having their stuff for the month. They usually go into the fetal position. When you cry, when somebody dies, you get in the fetal position. That is, that is the, what your brain 
that is a safe space, a safe spot, right? When you're in danger, you, you automatically crawl. So the brain does a lot of interesting things, right? And it definitely doesn't want us to do shit. But, but we have to, right? But our brain doesn't want us to. Because we, we, yeah. we get tired. We get tired from running. We get tired from exercising. We get tired from working, right? So it, it's thinking, hey, you're overworking me, man. We're not going to live that long. Yeah, so it's yeah. pretty cool, man. All this weird, like the stuff that the studies that are coming out with. It's, uh, it's it's been around for a while. This study, but it was really interesting mm-hmm. on on what our brain is capable of, what it does. Because remember, the brain thinks before you even act, or you move your fingers, or you move your eyes. It already happened. There's a. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah there is a there uh, is a uh, what do you call it latency or um, mm-hmm. a certain amount of seconds. By the time the brain thinks. It's you're, you're you're stepping on the gas, but your brain already told you to step on the gas, like a second ago, two seconds ago. It's it's kind of crazy. That that part I get, but that whole first part, not I don't. I mean, without due respect, Joe, your brother, I don't know where the hell you found that. I'm gonna need a lot of fact checking I, done on that. I feel, I feel like it's a whole bunch of like essays that they've been pieced together, and they left out all the important shit. Like based on what you eat, your brain tells you what to do because of all the chemicals that you did. But but the brain doesn't doesn't know, like doesn't know well, about the chemicals. The brain just doesn't want well, you to do any activity. Joe, don't worry about it. Remember, Will don't believe anything until after midnight. Well, uh, so after midnight, I'll, he'll believe it. I'll tell you a secret. Yeah. I'll tell you a secret. So uh, as my profession, I went to school for this stuff, mm-hmm. and I became a uh, sports uh, a personal trainer, sports rehabilitation, all kinds of stuff. For uh, I went to school for sports medicine. So nobody really knows mm-hmm. that about, just my family. And uh, I had to do a, um, uh, what do you call it, a case study. So the school had case studies, right? And we had to pick a subject and we just happened to get the brain. And uh, we had to find out how the brain worked, how to operate it, and we had to build a case study so we can graduate uh, from school. And that's what I did. I decided to go to the school because my father was an athlete and he got injured early. And I was an athlete and I got injured early and I wanted to know how the body worked. So I just decided to go to school. And I ended up just working full time and going to school full time just because I wanted to learn about the body a little bit. I used to know a lot more. Now I'm kind of a little bit out of the game, but I used to know, I, I went to school for a while to learn all this stuff and that's where I got it. That's what, that was one of our case studies for school. Yeah. Um, when I wake up tomorrow, then <laughs> I see how I feel about it. Uh, but thank, thank you for, for that. Um, Professor Joe, thank, thank you. you. The secret's no longer, I, it's, it's I, gone I, now. I, 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 I really I really do want that information uh, whenever you uh, get a chance, please. Oh, I'll get it. Jay Dot, um, Mr. I don't get tired. Uh, how many hours do you need to function, especially now? Because you don't, you, you have to leave the house now. I do. Yeah. I, I, um, I believe in, I think the, the concept is sleep debt. Like you're supposed to get a certain amount of sleep and you can cheat your body of that sleep and still function, but you will pay that debt. You're accumulating debt and your body will, you will pay that debt at some point. You will, it's going mm-hmm. to take the rest from you when it needs it. And that's pretty much how I operate. I'm a, I'm a live in debt. And then when I crash, I crash, you know, mm. uh, I slept for 12 hours the other day. I came home from work and was just so exhausted. I looked at the clock. It was six o'clock. I went to sleep. When I woke up, it was time to go to work again. And I was like, oh, God. damn. But I think that was one of those moments where it just caught up with me. And it was time to time to go down. And that's what happened. So, Is it that or is it because you have to actually physically be around people more often? That is what it, I am. And I learned this to be doing brain stuff. Oh, I, I learned that you, you use 75% of your energy thinking. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, mental exercise is far more exhausting than physical exercise. And so, yeah, being around people is a mental exercise for me. Right? It is listening to people say things and not responding as I want to, you know, not letting them 
Let me repeat exactly what you just said so you can understand how stupid it sounds when you said like not saying that all day is mm -hmm. uh is exhausting. So yeah, I, I oh. can't that. Jay Dot, I had another um I got another one of those lines for you that you might want to write down. I thought about this the other day when I was looking at a um employee where he was talking to me. I'm scared already. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> uh yeah, it was how long did you realize that you was just dumb? So write that down. All right. Uh, with, with the other one that I gave you gotcha. in the chat room. Yeah, the next, uh, next sit down I have with a person. I'm like, you know, I just, you know, serious question. How how long have you known you were this stupid? Like that. Yeah. Yes. Like that. That's that right in those type of scenarios. Yep. I appreciate that, Will. I do. I do. No problem. Yeah. Uh I actually have like a list of random shit I was gonna ask y'all, but I'm not gonna do that. I don't want Big Brother uh, have me in the office after after we take a break. So before we wrap this up, um, what, what Joe? Does this? I think this is more a little bit along your lines. What's your thought on people obsess the obsession, uh, uh, obsession with conspiracy theories and and true crime dramas? I think they want to believe, but um, there's too much stuff going on social media that it makes it hard for you to believe anything because uh, there's different stories. And I think it's like a mystery, right? Um, especially conspiracy theories. They, they, It's a thrill, right? To like, is this true? Is this, you know, and, and people gravitate to to that kind of stuff, to that mysterious. Um, th that's I heard this, uh, somebody said this once, a professor said that when you're dating uh, women usually uh, are attracted to men that are more mysterious than the men that just put it all out, right? And I feel like people are attracted to that mystery, to that, uh, I wonder if this is true, I wonder if this is not true, or and it intrigues them, it intrigues us as humans. And uh, I think that's why they like this true crime stuff, you know? It's just uh, us trying, it's like the aliens, same shit, you know? It's like, is it real? Oh my God, is that? do they exist, you know? And it's just very intriguing, right? It's something that's, uh, that, uh, you wish it was true for some people and uh so that's that's what i think about that big brother what about you uh, as far as conspiracy theories i think that so many people don't know how to trust their own thoughts and opinions so they're always diving deeper and deeper so they're that starts the obsession. This is just my opinion. And, you know, it's just a bunch of random information. Some may be true, some may be false. And they just kind of put it all together. And with people obsessed with like, um, what was it? The true crime thing. I think we, people just have an obsession with violence and murder and it triggers trauma. So they want to see it from, you know, they, they don't want to experience it, but they want to just look at it and view it. So experience it from the outside. Not yeah. 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 You, you, you know, you, you know, what I mean. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, no, I, I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah. I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Yes. And because I when I found myself watching like even like those Dateline specials and stuff like that, when I find myself like, oh, yeah, I want to see this story, I reminded myself. You know, these are real people and these are their lives. So I kind of made myself kind of get out of that mode of wanting to watch it. J Dot. You muted. You muted. There we go. I sure am. Right. I'm gonna take a page out of your book, Willie, and I'm a I'm gonna step across some lines. Uh -oh. This may be somewhat controversial and just understand what I'm saying does not apply to everybody, especially present company, not, you know, not addressing anything that I, I, I think or seeing you. But I see with a lot of the people that I know personally, that seem to be very obsessed with these conspiracy theories. They are people who in other aspects of their life did not come across as super intelligent. And in this moment, this is a moment for them to get some information easily because somebody else has compiled all this research. They don't have to go do it. They just have to go read it and feel like they know something. And now they know something that is contrary to the masses 
So in that moment, they feel smarter than the majority of other people because they now feel like they have this fact-based information and they know something that you don't know. And that's that's what I see all the time. They gravitate toward these ideas because the easiest way to feel smarter than everybody else is to just think something different and then have some sort of, you know, fact because I read it in an article. Maybe they just like maybe they just like saying I read something. Like oh, I I was read, you need to read more or something. Like now you need to read different things, dude. Like like, you know, that's that's not the moral of this story. Don't don't do that. Um, but that's what I come across a lot. It's just people who want to feel like, and that's why I was, I think I, when I talked to you with the, uh, like the woke thing used to bother, used to bother me because it used to be like woke as opposed to what are you saying that because I don't, uh, believe what you believe or, or am looking down the same rabbit holes you're looking at that I'm asleep, you know, like that. And I often find it that these people do not like sharing the information. If you start digging or picking at whatever it is that they're, putting out there is these conspiracy theories and these ideas and you ask them for the proof they'll say go do your own research it's like no nah, I'm, I'm talking to you you did the research already why, why would you not want to share the information if you already have it and it seems to be important information that the rest of us sheep you know would benefit from if we had it so those two things make me wary of like conspiracy theories a lot of times i think they just they want to be on the opposite side of something because it makes them feel better and uh and they like to to hoard information and just uh like it's 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 it, it does something for them to feel like they know something that you don't know even if it's nonsense in most cases but i think all of us want to get closer to the truth and we all feel like the truth isn't necessarily readily available so when you find something that seems to be hidden is you know it's definitely attractive but the motivations aren't always pure in my eyes. I'm off my soapbox now. Sorry. No, you are good to go. Hey, man, don't don't never apologize for 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 speaking your truth. Uh, I guess it's on me, uh, <laughs> the woke one. <laughs> I wasn't talking about you, really. I wasn't talking about you. No, but you know what? At some point, I do want to have a conversation about the woke thing, because I think some people have a I think some people are misinformed on the whole term about being woke. Um which I'm fine with the whole the I'm 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 fine with that with, with being woke uh in my lane. Oh, right. <laughs> not not somebody I, I know exactly the woke ones that you're talking about though. Uh, J dot. Uh, on the the conspiracy theories thing. This is me again doing the doing the devil's advocate. I think because there is so much information out there right now, nobody doesn't know what to believe and not believe. So. So many other people, so many people don't know how to don't know how to think for themselves. So if they they hear something, they automatically grab it, they run with it. They don't know how to research. They just go based on what they was told. And that and that's it. I get it. But for me, when I see a lot of, uh, when I see a lot of them and I look into a lot of them, of the conspiracy theories, there's so much information from so many different people. You don't really know what is true. And then you don't know if, if you, I don't know if you have ever, ever seen or heard where media intentionally put out too much information to cover up the real information. And that is what's happening now because now media, now media is part of social media. That's two different things. You got media and you got social media, but now a lot of the stuff that you would hear on media is being flooded on social media. 
So I think it's part of a design. So now I have my own conspiracy theory. It's part of the design. Let's flood them with so much information to where they're not going to know what the hell is the truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I think the uh, I think the obsession of it is very unhealthy because it's not allowing you to think for yourself. That's my opinion. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not in a position to judge anyone, but that, that's my opinion. Um, as far as the true crimes, uh, dramas, I feel like I agree with what you said, big brother. We, our society is addicted to seeing people hurt. I don't know why, but we, I say we, we as a society, we we enjoy, we get some type of enjoyment out of seeing people get hurt, injured, maimed. Um, excuse me. Some of us even feel it. Some of, it makes some of us feel better. It's like that psycho that psychology type thing where you see somebody feel hurt, now you feel better. It's like this um, transfer of energy type thing, but I don't understand that. I I really don't. I don't know why as a society we tend to gravitate to true crime people coming up missing and you know people getting murdered. I don't know why we why we gravitate. To that i don't know i think we all have fantasies of doing some of that i think all of us know somebody we want to murder and we've probably thought about how we would do it and just don't carry it out See, that, this is why you that's why we here that's why we here i want to ask you some questions but i don't want to i don't want nothing to come back on us i don't i don't want i don't want to do I don't, I don't want, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I want to, man. Yeah, I don't want to have to put on my best suit and you see me walk in the courtroom to testify against you. I'm like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, damn. But, and I just lean in. Yes, this is an Amarni suit before we begin. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, man, this was a great episode, y'all. We went a little bit longer. Than we uh, have been. Uh, do we have any final thoughts? Anybody got anything? I, I, for myself, it's the first week. I know this is a predated episode, but it's the first week of NFL football. Yes, Lord. Do y'all do y'all want to um, state your teams? Go ahead, Big Brother. Anywhere Russell Wilson is, that's where I'm at. So yeah. Have a great season, Russell. Okay. Okay. I didn't I didn't see that one coming. Okay. <laughs> didn't see that. So so you was a Seahawk <laughs> fan before Denver. Yes. So no matter where he goes, it can be Cleveland. You a Cleveland Browns fan. Yes. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I made that clear, sir. Yeah, I don't understand what we're talking about. Wait, wait, did you see my eyes? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. No, I I get it. I I I was a Brett Favre fan, so I I get it. <laughs> the four. Well, okay. All right. The Thank four, you. Ladies. <laughs> let's make that clear, okay? <laughs> that I. Yeah. Big brother was talking about the lights. It's the light. That's why I'm rolling my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was I was a Peyton Manning fan because I remember watching him at Tennessee, so. I get it. I get it. Joe, what about uh, you? Well, we were talking a little bit about this, but uh, I am a uh, forever 49er fan, so I really hope that the 49ers make it all the way, maybe win a championship. They're 6-1, hopefully. Um, I know that they destroyed the Steelers today, so feel bad for them, but, you know, hopefully they win. I don't know. That's my – I don't know, man. You know what? You guys – you got Patrick Mahomes and these dudes. I mean, shit. I mean, you got the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, with Joe Burrow. I mean, 
That dude's badass. I mean, I don't know. He smokes cigars and drinks and throws a football. Come on, man. I mean, that's my guy right there. But <laughs> Joe's like, that's my kind of that's, guy. That's my kind of guy right there, man. Smoking cigars, drinking, you know, putting the guns in the air. That's it. He's probably from Arizona. <laughs> wild, wild west. You get to Arizona. Now, uh, I'm a fan of the uh, National Football League organization in the District of Columbia. I don't know what they're going to be called by the time this episode comes out. So I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Lifelong. Right. It's a hard life. But we want to know right now. We, we beat those Cardinals. So uh, yeah. we'll see. We're undefeated. We have a better record than the Kansas City Chiefs. They These do. are all facts. True. They do. The Lions won. Yeah. 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 And what is about to happen in the world with uh, the Lions and the, and the Commanders win in Week One? That that's, just seems like that's not a right. Set up for the it's next trickery. Yep, I agree. Not the Lions, man. I, it's okay with the Washington, but the Lions. They they was they are picking up from where they left off last season because mm-hmm. yeah. they was they they really was on the road. That last four four weeks of the season, yeah. five weeks, they they was they was really gearing it up, man. So yeah. I'm, I'm not surprised that they won Monday. Yeah. I am a Tampa Bay Buccaneers before the Tom Brady. Uh, I've been a Buccaneers Cream fan since, huh? Cream sickles and everything. Uh, I'm not that old. I'm. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when work done, work yeah. done when when he got there. So it's like ninety, ninety something. I can't remember him, but yeah. So I've been a Tampa Bay fan for for a while. Uh, any uh, fantasy football? Yes, I'm in like six leagues right now this year. Six. Damn. And it's a lot of work this morning checking uh, rosters and making sure I had everything the way I wanted it. Damn. I um I was just going through my um matchup and my kicker has 18 points, Damn. which has more than they had more than my defense. Yeah, Damn. Uh, uh, your boy from uh, the Eagles, the Eagles kicker. Mm. I'm not doing uh, one this year. L- huh? I'm not doing one this year. I just don't have enough time. I don't. I don't think like this year. I'm probably gonna skip fantasy till next year. Yeah. If I could put the effort I put into fantasy football into the stock market, I'd be a, a rich man. Hey, see, hey, yep. you 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 already answer your you already answer your your, your own question. Mm-hmm. So, I th- I think you know what you need to do. I do. Question mm-hmm. is, will I do it? <laughs> if I don't show up one week, y'all know what happened. Mm. Right, you're rich. I got you. All right, fellas. Well, like I said, this was a great conversation. I enjoyed this. Um, I'm glad to be back within y'all's space, visit, uh, site, or whatnot. Or I'm glad to conversate with y'all. I was I, I was looking forward to this all week. So it is one of the highlights of my week. I would say that. So I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the um, listeners for following us on this journey. That's all I got. Uh, Joe, who, whoever want to go next can go. Go ahead, big brother. I was looking forward to it this week also. Happy to be back with everybody. Excited uh, about the show moving forward. And thank you again to the listeners. Yeah. Always a good talk with you guys. I appreciate it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for everybody for uh, listening. And uh, we appreciate we appreciate all of you guys, and thank you. All right, kings and queens. We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at the League of Kings podcast and on TikTok at the League of Kings podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.